I was hanging with you and then I realized I didn't think it was true I was surprised when I found out I'd fallen for you Hi everyone, it's Wynette and I'm back with another university video So I got a lot of comments from my last video asking about my application process to the schools that I applied to and I have some notes here and I'm going to be telling you exactly what I did to get into some of these business schools. Also, I have a little bonus for you guys. Uh, in the description, there's a Dropbox link where I put all my essays down there. So if you want to see exactly what I submitted, you can check that out. I have U of T, Ivy, Queens, etc, etc. And you can look at it. Please note that I did edit them a little bit to take out my school's name and to take out the place that I work just for privacy. So if it looks a little weird, that's because I don't want to be stopped. Okay, so the first one I'm going to start with is Rotman Commerce at U of T. So before I get started about this supplementary application, I just want to say that I believe Rotman Commerce application is not to necessarily see what you did outside of school or how good you are as a person, okay, not how good you are as a person, but like it's not necessarily to see your character, it's more just to see if you can speak English or not, like if you're proficient in English because it doesn't really ask about your extracurriculars and I know so many people that got into Rotman Commerce and all they had to have was like a high 80, low 90 average. And I don't think that all of our sub apps were like amazing. I think it just proved that we could communicate in English effectively. So that being said, the Rotman Commerce application is made up of three parts and they're all timed. So you do it in one sitting. The first part is a short answer question that you have 20 minutes to answer. So the one that the class of 2018-2019 had to do was what two accomplishments outside of, outside of the classroom are you most proud of and why? And you can see that link down below. And then the second short answer question we had 30 minutes to do and it's randomly chosen from a question bank. And the one I had was basically when did you become interested in business and what is your dream job obviously that's not the actual question but that's just what i think it was and you can check that out as well and then the last part of the rotman commerce application was a video response so this guy named jeffrey trapp is going to flash on your screen and he's going to ask you a question and then you have a minute i think to prepare a question just write it down and then you have 30 seconds to answer that question and the question I had was describe a time when you overcame an obstacle working in a group. I'm paraphrasing, but my answer was like, oh, like I was in a group project and this person wasn't doing their part. So I went up to them and we discovered that they were actually not confident in their parts. So I helped them kind of get on the right track and help them become comfortable in their topic so that our group could succeed. Obviously, that's not like a spectacular answer or anything. It's just, I think, common sense. But uh, yeah, so the Robin Commerce application, I wouldn't stress too much about. You just gotta do decent. And also, I think as long as you have good grades, that should help you. I think they're very grades-based and not necessarily looking for superstars in their sub app. Good, <laughs> Let's move on to Queen's Commerce SEP app. So there were two main parts of this. The first part is a PSE, which is a personal statement of excellence. The second part is an SE, which is a supplementary essay. So let's start with the PSE. <laughs> the PSE has three parts to it, where you just list your extracurriculars, the awards you've one and the employment history that you've had i didn't include that in the dropbox because it's kind of personal i don't want to disclose where i live and such but it's very very simple you just list out you know the jobs you've had the volunteering you've done but i did include the psc essay so you can find that below 
Now the second part were two supplementary essays and I don't believe this is the same for all faculties, it's just Commerce has two and you'll see them links below. If you read them, you might see that I took a bit of a risk, especially for my Queen's Commerce diversity essay. I put a fun spit on it, made it a little cheeky and such, but I got rejected, so I don't know if that's the right way to go. I mean, I did get waitlisted, so possibly they did like it, just as not just not as much as they liked the other ones. So, because Queen's Commerce is the most difficult program to get into and the only program I got rejected to, I would suggest get getting an editor maybe or an upper year student to look at your essay just because after your grades are above 87%, apparently they only read your essays and that defines you and determines whether you get rejected or accepted. So really put an extra time into those essays. All right, let's move on to IVAEO's application. Now this one was the longest one. Like I started with IVAEO first just because I figured after I tried super hard on this application, I could essentially copy and paste parts of IVAEO into my other applications. And that's exactly what I did. So if you're going through my job box thinking like I already read this, it's probably because I copied it from my IVAEO. So this one's gonna be pretty long. The first one they ask about is education and they wanna know specifically what math are you taking. So IVAEO only requires you to take one grade 12 math and they're looking for, I would say high 80s, low 90s or anything above. So you can take data, calculus or advanced functions, whichever one. The second one they wanna know is your awards. So non-academic awards. For me, I talked a lot about my lifeguarding and swim instructing because we have to attain multiple awards to become certified. Uh, so just keep in mind those are non-academic. And then the third part is listing your activities. Now this was just huge. So once again, they had three main activities with essays. If you watched my last video, you know that I had to write essays on this and they were pretty long. So I wrote essays on being a deck president, being a lifeguard and being a volunteer at my public library. They also ask for references. And these references have to be real. They have to be able to respond, to answer phone calls, to answer emails because IVAEO is not bluffing and they did email all my references. And if your references don't verify that you actually did these activities, you will not be accepted. Uh, after you list your three main activities and you provide essays, they'll ask for additional activities. These activities is similar to the Queen's Commerce extracurricular part where you just list your activities and you provide references. So I had 12 additional smaller activities where I just listed. These include being a camp counselor, doing the school announcements, being a math tutor, and coaching soccer. So these are just activities I listed and provided references that they actually emailed. So all your references, make sure that they are reliable because they will have to answer an IVAEO email where they just sign a form or type the forms verifying your existence, your participation. And the last part is work experience. So you're just gonna have to list the places you've worked similar to the Queen's SUP app and you're gonna provide references, reliable ones. I put down camp counselor, being a pool soup at my school board, first aid instructor, swim instructor, lifeguard, um, private first aid instructor. So anything and everything you should just list down because it doesn't hurt. And then the last part was languages and international experience. They basically want to know if you studied, lived, worked, or volunteered in any country other than your own or Canada. And I can't, I couldn't answer this. I only speak English. Like that's the only language I speak fluently. And I like don't get to travel the world. I don't get to study somewhere else. Like I'm very normal and average. Like I don't get those opportunities. But after seeing that, I was like, wow, like these are the people applying to Ivy. And don't be scared. Don't be intimidated by that. Because I was a little scared thinking like, do these people normally travel the world? Do they normally study abroad? But I know multiple people that were filling out this application with me and they also 
couldn't fill this part out and they still got accepted. So don't let that part intimidate you. Now moving on to my Waterloo AIF. I got a comment from my last video from Nick asking to view my AIF and I was definitely just gonna re screen record my AIF and kind of describe what I said, but Waterloo wiped out my AIF and I do not have access to my answers anymore. However, I do have access to a blank AIF and I included that in the Dropbox below. But essentially, I'm just gonna tell you what it looks like. There's a question called or asks why Waterloo and I have that linked below. It's very similar to my why McMaster question. I definitely copy and pasted both and just did insert replace or whatever. It's gonna ask for your ECs, your work experience, the awards you have. It's gonna ask about any circumstances, the school you attend. And the last portion that I really, really wanna stress or point out is Waterloo asks in its AIF about the courses you took. So they want to know why you didn't take courses at your regular day school. So if you took online courses or night school courses, they want to know and they want to know why. And second, they want to know if you repeated any courses and also why. So they are definitely sticklers for things like that. I didn't have any other school ask about the courses you've took, but if you're considering other forms of education outside your regular day school, be aware that that may not be the best choice if Waterloo's accounting and finance program is your first choice. Next, I'm gonna move on to Shulik Sepap. And this one was actually quite extensive. So I had to list my main ECs and provide a less than 150 word paragraph of the learning outcomes from these ECs. And you can see that link below. And the second part that I found kind of challenging of the Schulich SUP app is three video questions. So same as U of T where someone flashes on the screen to ask you a question and you have like a minute to draft it and you have 30 seconds to provide an answer. That's exactly Schulich, but there's three of them. And these questions were not like, oh, name a time you had to work with a team. No, these questions were kind of dicey. The one I remember having, one of the three, was what would you do if you caught a classmate cheating on an exam? So these are like ethical questions. And my answer was like, oh, I'd probably talk to them one-on-one. -on -one see if they need support, help, maybe they just don't know what they're doing, maybe they're going through a rough time, and hopefully just being a friend in that difficult part and hoping that they learn their lesson and become a better student and a better person. So that's what I said, I'm not saying that's right, but just be aware that the Schulich questions are kind of, uh, you know, they're, they're hard to answer but I believe in the practice rounds that they give you, they actually give you the specific questions they're gonna ask. So just practice as much as you can for the Schulich application if you're really interested in attending Schulich and I'm sure you'll ace yourself out. Now I'm gonna move on to my school, McMaster, and it's raining so if you hear those drops from being aesthetic, it's just crazy. So McMaster SUP app is optional but you can receive a $5,000 scholarship if you impress the judges. I did not get this scholarship. I only received $2,000 from my entrance scholarship. Not, I didn't mean like only, like I am grateful to receive $2,000, but I didn't get the bigger scholarship. Now the first question on the SUP app is why DeGroote, so why McMaster's Business School, and I put like the same thing as Waterloo, just switched up a little bit. The second thing was an essay about a change you implemented, and I believe I talked about the change I implemented as my school's DECA president. And the last essay I had to write was describe a time you're on a team, how did your team overcome obstacles to become successful. I'm paraphrasing there, but I talked about my house league soccer team, the last one I was on, and just how we overcame quirks and like just our differences and like how we just kind of bonded and became a better team. Well guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you found that helpful and 
just utilize the Dropbox that I put down below so you can kind of see what a accepted or waitlisted essay looks like. If you guys have any questions at all about university, school, and so on, I'll be so happy to answer them, so leave them down below. Also, I have a lot more university vlogs coming out. I'm moving in this weekend and Frosh Week and starting my classes, so subscribe for that. And until then, good luck with your back to school and your school year, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.